So I want to talk about new things which are coming up and might be uh, useful for uh, landslide detection. So I myself, I'm at Carnegie Mellon University in the Robotics Institute, uh, and I'm working a lot of with what's commonly known as like maybe AI or so, uh, like deep network, uh, uh, neural networks for, for geometry. And uh, I've started uh, to see if those techniques can be used um, for landslide detection, landslide analysis. So starting, um, so it, I don't have to tell you that uh, landslides are uh, a big problem. Uh, and especially around here. And when I get started, it was in 2018, which was a very wet uh, uh, spring. It was the wettest year on record. And so we had lots of lands, uh, catastrophic landslides with lots of traffic interruptions. So that's when I got aware of, of this problem, I got started to see the technologies which I use in uh, intelligence transportation, if that can be used for landslides. So, just a very short um, mention on uh, uh, what is deep learning. You, you might hear those words uh, or in AI and very briefly explaining, especially how it relates to computer vision is, is following. So you have, uh, a, you start with one image uh, and you can consider an image as a matrix, right? And then you apply a function to that and then this matrix becomes a matrix which has uh, uh, probabilities of, in this case here, is this pixel, does it represent a road or does it represent something else, right? Uh, so uh, that's what deep learning wants to do. And the amazing thing is that images have about a million elements. The result has a million elements and the function which we are using here has about 10 million elements. Um, and so the, the, the great breakthrough is, was that, you know, deep learning, deep, deep networks can give you these kind of functions. And the great, ex great advantage is it can learn this, it can learn this function when you show it a lot of examples. So you show a lot of examples and say, okay, in this image, the road is here. In this next image, the road is here. Um, you don't have to understand anything on how the image was taken. Um, you just give it examples and it learns it. So that's the great uh, advantage. The great disadvantage is you need about 10,000 or sometimes even millions of examples for, for, for the system to learn it. Uh, and then with, with landslide, it might be a little bit difficult because um, you might not find tens of thousands uh, or millions even of, of examples of landslides to, to train your um, uh, uh, to, to train your deep network. So, but this is, okay, so this is a very um, uh, brief introduction on what, what deep learning is. Here are this, um, a few examples what you could do with that. So, uh, so this is the state of the art and with state of the art is like you can go, I mean, I have on the, on the bottom, uh, of my slide here, I have uh, a link. You can download the program and and do what what you you see here. So, um, so one is object classification. So you can get a picture and you can find the objects like people, bicycles, and so on. So that's localization and classification. Another thing you can do is what's called panoptic segmentation. Is for each pixel in the image you can tell what it belongs to. So it's the blue here is sky, the green is trees, uh, then there's people and then there's bicycles. And it also tells you uh, if there's like several people, it tells you these pixels belong to person one, these pixels belong to person two. And a third example I want to show is um, uh, a key point. So you can say these are people and they're important locations on the person like uh, the foot or the shoulders and so on and you determine where they are in the image and that will give you the the post the posture uh, for example of of this these people so um, as I mentioned we are now in the process of trying to use these kind of uh, techniques to 
um, find things which uh, help us uh, prevent or analyze um, um, uh, landslides. And so I've shown here three examples which I, which I can think of. There's probably many more, but uh, so one is debris on the road. So you see here lots of uh, uh, stones and other stuff. So that tells you that some, somewhere, you know, something has been washed out. Another thing is water. Water is, of course, very important. Um, uh, you saw it also in, in, in the last um, uh, presentation that water is always tells you where there's problems. Uh, so one thing is um, to prevent uh, landslides, you need to know, you, you need to drain the water because the, the red clay here in, 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 in Pennsylvania, together with the water, can, uh, um, uh, start the landslides. So this might indicate here there's somewhere there's a, a, a drainage problem, so you need to address it. Uh, sometimes water can also tell you that there, that there uh, is a problem. Um, um, for example, uh, uh, a landslide might crack some pipes and then you get the water out and then all of a sudden there's a wet spot and you don't know where it comes from and it's because of a pipe um, which has burst. Uh, another thing um, which can be a very good indicator is cracks in the road. Here in, in this case uh, it, it already failed but what usually happens is that you first get a longitudinal crack and then when it gets really bad it curves and then once it has curved then it then it will fall. So if you can find these longitudinal cracks uh, it indicates, okay, something is going on. When it starts curving, then it's really uh, important. So we want to uh, collect enough data so we can actually um, train those uh, uh, neural nets to detect these things. Um, so, uh, so neural nets is one computer vision technique. Another computer vision technique is for photogrammetry. It has also many different uh, uh, names. It's structure for motion or stereo or visual odometry or visual slam. They all have different emphasis on, on what they do. Um, but the core thing to know about it, it's a geometric method. So you don't learn things, you do geometry. So here is just a picture. Um, you, know, you have a 3D object and you take pictures of it and the, the image of that is different depending on where you I took the picture, you look very carefully at the geometry and do your complicated math and you can do 3D reconstruction. So um, here's one result. Uh, so I took about 80 images of this uh, uh, side of the road. And uh, with this, I can, with those 80 images, I can make a 3D reconstruction. So you see that so uh, uh, fairly faithfully uh, reconstructs this this um, this hillside. Um, here's another one. So this is actually the the uh, landslide um, at the west end. You saw a picture in, in at the beginning. Um, so I uh, made this 3D reconstruction just using my own smartphone and my laptop. So, uh, and uh, it's free software, so you can download it and you can do it yourself. So this is a very uh, faithful uh, representation of, of uh, what's left over. Um, and the great thing is you don't need uh, 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 many thousand dollars uh, worth of uh, laser scan equipment. You can just use your smartphone and your um, and your laptop to do this, this kind of reconstruction. So uh, what are the things we, we want to look at? So the, the um, besides, you know, a, a whole 3D model of the, of the landslide. So um, we, we, we look at certain indicators. So for example, uh, retaining walls, uh, when they start leaning over, uh, with time, they might, and uh, that might be indication that, you know, the, 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 the land is moving. Um, similarly, uh, rail guards, uh, 
when when the um, when the side gives way, the rail guard will bend. And um, so if you have first a, a 3D model of the uh, rail guard when it was just first constructed, and then you observe it over time, if it starts bending, and then that might be another indicator of uh, that there's um, uh, uh, a landslide going on. Then there's trees. Now in, in this image, the trees already uh, fallen down. But what I, um, you know, what people have told me, uh, uh, the observation is that if you have a small movement in the earth, um, you might have a much larger movement in the, um, in the tree. It's sort of like a dial, right? And so that is something we want to look at if we can, can find out uh, if that's an, a good indicator um, on, on how much the soil moves if we observe the trees and how much they change their, their tilt over time. Um, so here's an, here's an example. Um, I mean, we, we're looking at cracks. And so here's one area uh, which I observe like every couple of months, I take some pictures of that. So it's first here's some cracks. Again, here's the longitudinal cracking and it starts to, to bend over. And then here, um, a few months later, yes, it, it cracked uh, and, and it started sliding. And it's here sliding even more and they have to put in even more signage uh, in there to, uh, to warn the drivers over there and make sure that especially the big trucks don't get close to it to, to uh, make it even worse. Um, so for, for this um, case, I did the, again a 3D reconstruction so you can, can see that here. Um, and now if I take this 3D reconstruction and take a top view, it's this one here. I take a slice here out. You see that top view slice here. Now I turn it around, have the side, uh, side view, and I get the cross section. So that can tell me what the cross section is at this area, and I can then put it on in uh, and analyze it further. And I'm working with a, a civil engineering um, to see if, if this kind of um, a cross section can be analyzed. So, uh, so this is like here, um, finite element analysis. Um, oops. Um, of, uh, of, of a slope. So that's a, a master student which has been working on it. This shows you the development. There's, a, there's the, 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 uh, the surface which will, um, uh, where the slide happens and the colors indicate the displacement. So what we hope is that we can, with the, 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 the uh, real world data and this model, um, we can analyze uh, uh, the, 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 the landslide. Now, as I mentioned before, it's always good to have a lot of data. So uh, in a parallel project, we are, um, um, equipping a bus, a transit bus with cameras. You might have already seen that a lot of buses which drive around here in Pittsburgh do have cameras on the outside. Um, we want to tap in that, those video uh, streams and observe the environment around the bus continuously. So each time it drives up and down uh, its, uh, its route, it will take pictures and we analyze it. And uh, there are several things we want to look at, you know, traffic counts and updating HD maps, but for this talk, the important thing is we want to look at any possible landslide. So each, each hour we can drive by, take a picture on where there might be a potential landslide and see how it develops. So we hope that this way um, we can have like an early warning system that within a very short time, like hours maybe, of a landslide happening or, or, or something going on, uh, that we can uh, have a warning and, and uh, tell that there's, uh, it needs to uh, pay attention. So this is my talk. I leave this slide up uh, because you know, it shows the landslide, it shows what, where we are going. So uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. And thank you very much for your attention.